Welcome to 5am Ramen, your gateway to the wonderful world of ramen in Japan. I'm Frank, your ramen loving host. At this point, my body is composed of more ramen soup than it is water. This is the ninth episode in a Northern Japan ramen series. In the first eight episodes, I had 22 bowls of ramen in Gumma, Niigata, and Yamagata prefectures. I'm still in Yamagata prefecture now, and this is for ramen bowls number 23 and number 24. I'm also going to be sampling some beef dishes later on. I just had to, as the area I'm in now is known for amazing high-grade beef. Stick around until the end if you want to see that too. Anyways, back to ramen. Yamagata Prefecture is crazy about ramen, having more ramen shops per person than any other prefecture of Japan. I've so far eaten four Yamagata ramen styles and now we'll be sampling the fifth and final style of Yamagata ramen. I'll let you know where I've been. I just left Nanyo City Yamagata, taking the train to Yonezawa City Yamagata and arriving here in the evening. Yonezawa City isn't the smallest city I visited in Yamagata, but it's not exactly a big one either with about 80,000 people. You can tell though that they get a lot of snow. When I visited, it was towards the end of February, but the snow is still very much piled up across the city. So, Yonezawa is where this fifth and final style of Yamagata ramen will be consumed. Yonezawa ramen is known for its relatively light soup and incredible noodles. After checking in and dropping off my bags at my Yonezawa hotel, I immediately head out for ramen. These smaller city ramen shops aren't open late like in Tokyo. Let's go to me, your ramen reporter on the ground. I'm walking to a ramen shop that isn't too far from my hotel. It's called Kumabun. Alrighty, I am here in Yonezawa walking to my first Yonezawa ramen shop. Yonezawa is going to be a contrast from the garlicky heavy ramen that I just had, the miso ramen. But I think my body's also happy that we're going back to a lighter ramen. And this will be my last ramen of the day. And I'm going to get back to it tomorrow morning for another bowl of Yonezawa ramen. However, those plans I just mentioned were not meant to be. I arrived at ramen shop Kumabun only for it to be closed. Keep this in mind when you're visiting Japan. This isn't the case at big ramen chains, let's say, but even in Tokyo, ramen shops can run out of soup if they have a lot of customers that day. Yep, unfortunately, they're done for the day. I must have just missed it because there were some people inside eating. Yeah, it could have even been a 10 minute difference, but it's all good. If anything, I got some exercise and the heavier, thicker noodles today anyway was a lot. So not the end of the world if I skip one bowl. I think what I'm going to do instead is basically have two Yonezawa bowls in the morning. Tail between my legs, I retreated back to the hotel and made sure to get a good night's sleep. Don't worry, I'll be visiting ramen shop Kumabun again. The next day, I check out of my hotel, hang out in the lobby, and with a cup of coffee in hand, map out my ramen route. I decide to visit a ramen shop called Soba no Mise Hirama first. Let's call them Hirama for short. Hirama is a must. They of course do the local Yonezawa style of ramen and are supposed to be the best at it. The only thing is they're a little bit out of the way. I take a cab, but I promise myself that I'll take a train on the way back. It's just that the trains out here don't really come that often. After plenty of snowy scenery on the way, I make landfall at Hirama. I'm excited. It's a little bit far away from Yonezawa City, probably the most famous ramen shop in all of Yonezawa, doing a Yonezawa style ramen. And it doesn't get more remote than this, surrounded by white snow, mountains. What a beautiful, beautiful backdrop you got here and great surroundings to enjoy ramen in. Hirama started in 1960 as a noodle manufacturer. You therefore know they take their noodles today seriously. Hirama pivoted to serving ramen in 1972 and didn't look back after that. Oh, and by the way, in Yonezawa city, you won't hear locals calling ramen ramen. They'll be calling it chuka soba. Think of chuka soba as an older name for ramen, something more classic. In Hirama's chuka soba, the soup is pork and chicken bones along with dried fish or niboshi. We have classic toppings, chashu pork, naruto fish cake, memma bamboo shoots, negi or spring onions, and a sheet of seaweed sprinkled with pepper. Now the thin wavy noodles are something special. With their noodle making roots, Hirama is not messing around. 
They hand press or hand massage the noodles. This is called temomi in Japanese. They do this during two sessions before letting the noodles rest for two to three days. Only after this do they boil them for each individual bowl of ramen. These noodles might have just been my favorite this whole northern Japan ramen trip. I finished my delicious bowl at Hirama, and if you remember, I promised myself that I wouldn't take a cab on the way back. I also think it would have been impossible to grab a cab near the ramen shop. Long story short, belly full of ramen from Hirama, I had to sprint to the train station to make my train. I'm sprinting to the station now. Got my water here. Look like some sort of preppy jogger. People definitely, I think, can tell I'm from out of town. But if I don't get to the station, I have to wait about an hour and a half. So, want to make this train. Thankfully, the sprinting paid off. I made it. Here's my reward. Just waiting for the train now. Had a little bit of time to spare. The bag's pretty heavy as well because I had my laptop in there and also the camera. So yeah, it was a bit of a training exercise, but got my workout for the day. Right after I got back to central Yonezawa city, I knew I had to visit Kumabun again. This was the spot from last night that was closed. Thankfully, there were no closed signs this time, and I walked right in and just a little bit before they stopped serving lunch. Kumabun hasn't been around as long as Hirama, but they still have a history going back to 1989. Kumabun still feels old school and it's as local as could be. In Kumabun's version of Chuka Soba, you expectedly have a similar soup, similar noodles, and similar toppings to Hirama. Oh, and another piece of ramen info. When people are talking about soba in Yonezawa city, they're talking about ramen, not soba buckwheat noodles. You don't even have to say chuka soba, the word that I introduced earlier. The word soba is synonymous with ramen here. So I inhale the bowl of chuka soba, or should I say soba, at Kumabun, and finally get a little bit of a break. So Yonezawa ramen here in Yamagata. I've completed all five of the styles. And I like this style to end with. What I really like about this style is it's super light. It's like a Tokyo soy sauce ramen, but even lighter. They're basically using chicken for a little bit of richness in the broth, but not that much richness alongside fish like niboshi. But the fish accent is very soft. Overall, super light, super clear, easy to eat. Between the first place I went to and Kumabun, the second place I went to, the bowls are very similar. Soup wise, I couldn't really taste like that much of a difference. I did like the pork chashu a little bit more at Kumabun. It's a little bit fattier, a little bit more modern, you could say. And I did prefer the noodles a little bit more at Hirama. They were slightly more frizzy, but outside of that, very similar bowls. They both had that signature Yonezawa style of noodles, beautiful texture, a lot of water in them, super easy to slurp. And I'm a big fan. Excellent bowls, excellent style of ramen here in Yonezawa. I have a bit of time to kill before my next train and what better way to kill time than by eating more. Yonezawa is also famous for Yonezawa beef, ranked among the top beef brands in the country. This is alongside beef like Matsuzaka beef and Kobe beef for example. I dropped by a restaurant across from Yonezawa station called Gyu Nabe Oki. Yonezawa beef is everywhere on the menu. They're preparing it in all different sorts of ways. I settle for some salt seasoned grilled beef, beef sushi, and a sampler of Junmaishu. Think of Junmaishu as Japanese rice wine or sake as it's referred to outside of Japan, but with no sugar added. My body was understandably confused since this wasn't the pork protein you get in ramen, but oh man, that Yonezawa beef was so good. Melt in your mouth, top of the line beef. Anyways, back to the wonderful world of ramen. We need to get ready for our final ramen prefecture on this northern Japan trip. And that prefecture is Fukushima. Unfortunately, Fukushima prefecture overseas is only known for one thing. But I can tell you, Fukushima is an incredible place to visit, ramen included. In fact, Fukushima is home to what might be Japan's most ramen obsessed town, Kitakata. Before we head to Kitakata though, we're making a pit stop in Fukushima city, visiting a ramen restaurant that might have just been my overall favorite on the whole trip. I've never felt more of an emotional connection to a ramen shop than this one. That's all in the next episode. Before Fukushima, let's properly close the books on ramen-filled 
Yamagata Prefecture. So there you have it, five styles of Yamagata ramen up here in snow country. And let me know which style you want to try the most. In Sakata City, we had the soy sauce ramen with the dumplings. In Shinjo City, we had the chicken heavy ramen with chicken giblets on top. Or how about the ice cold ramen in Yamagata City? And then we had the spicy miso ramen in Akayu. Or the Yonezawa style of ramen, a light soy sauce ramen with frizzy springy noodles. Yeah, out of curiosity, let me know which style you want to try the most and even the ramen shop you want to visit the most. Thanks for tuning in everybody and watching this Yamagata ramen video. Until next time, this is Frank from 5am ramen signing out. It was very light and oh, it's raining all of a sudden. Yeah, the snow is melting. It's really hot today here in uh, Yonezawa. In Shinjo City, we had the chicken heavy ramen with chicken giblets on top, followed by Or how about the cold ramen? So those sprinklers did follow me from Niigata Prefecture.